In this presentation, we shall learn how a Java program works and some basic concepts of object-oriented programming. Now let us start with the source program. What is a source program? The lines of codes written by a programmer by following the syntax of a particular programming language is known as source program. For example, we have written a program here by following the syntax of Java programming language. We say that it is a source program or the source codes. Now these codes must be converted into machine readable form. Now let us understand that uh, how the process of conversion takes place. The Java program or the source program that we have written they are forwarded to a special piece of software that we call a compiler and compiler converts our source programs into Java bytecodes or the Java bytecode program but before converting the source program into bytecodes the compiler makes it sure that our program is error free that there is no syntax error in our program if there are some syntax errors then the compiler accordingly lets us know about that once the errors are rectified or the program is made error free then the compiler converts our source programs into java bytecodes now it is very important to understand the meaning of the term bytecode because th the concept of bytecode differentiates the java programming language from other programming languages we know that java programming language is platform independent what does it mean it means that the program which is written in java language that can be run on windows platform on linux platform on macintosh operating system platform and others also so how does it happen actually there is a special piece of software that we call the java interpreter or the java virtual machine which is specific for a particular platform for example java interpreter for windows java interpreter for linux java interpreter for macintosh operating system now the java bytecodes which are generated by the compiler they are forwarded to the java interpreter or the java virtual machine for the specific platform for the particular platform and it is the java interpreter or the java virtual machine that actually translates our java bytecodes into the target platform so we are writing the program once and that program may be run on any platform uh, whether it is windows or linux or macintosh operating system that's how the process of conversion takes place let us understand let us take one more example one more figure here uh, with the help of this figure here we have java source codes then uh, they are forwarded to the java compiler then the java compiler converts the source codes into the java bytecodes now the java bytecodes along with the java library they are forwarded to the java virtual machine we have added here a java library why java java, li java library reason being because within our source code we may have referenced the java library at that time it becomes essential to include this library along with the java bytecodes and uh, forwarded uh, and they both of them are forwarded to the java virtual machine or the interpreter and it is the java virtual machine that uh, accordingly converts them according to the operating system or the platform and your program gets executed now let us discuss about the error cycle here with the help of the editor we edit the program actually editor is the piece of software which gives us the facility to edit the program now once our program is edited then we save the program suppose we have saved our program and the name of the file is my program when our program is saved at the time dot java extension is automatically appended uh, along with the name of the file 
so once the file is saved then it is forwarded to the compiler at this stage there are two, two possibilities either our program is error free or our program has some syntax errors the compiler checks for it if some errors are there syntax errors are there then accordingly this path is followed that is we have to use the editor we have to rectify the errors we have to save the file then again we have to send it to the compiler and if the program is error free at the time java compiler translates our source programs into intermediary codes that we call the java byte codes and note it here when we saved our program uh, within the editor at that time dot java extension was appended along with the name of the file now when the compiler converted the file into the byte code at the time dot class is appended as the extension name along with the file name it means that this file is an intermediary file or you can say that uh, intermediary codes has been generated that's the byte codes are there now these byte codes are forwarded to the interpreter or we call them the java virtual machine at this stage if some errors are there then accordingly we have to follow the same cycle otherwise our program uh, in fact the java virtual machine converts our program according to the platform platform for example windows or linux or mac macintosh operating system and our program gets executed object oriented programming concepts now let, let us have a brief discussion about the object oriented programming concepts object oriented programming where the focus is on objects so let us understand what's an object objects are key to understanding object oriented programming or object oriented technology if we look around us and we find that there are many examples of real world objects for example our dog our desk television set bicycle etc real world objects share two characteristics they all have state and behavior what is the meaning of the term state and behavior let us understand dogs have state that is name color breed hungry etc and behavior barking fetching wagging tail etc so dogs have state as well as behavior let us take one more example bicycle bicycles also have state that is current gear current pedal cadence current speed etc and behavior changing gear applying brakes etc let us uh, understand it with the help of some uh, pictures the inner circle shows the fields or the state of the object and the outer circle shows about the behavior or the methods of the object for example here in the inner circle 18 miles per hour that is the state of the cycle when it is running at a particular instant of time 90 rotations per minute that's again the state it's running in fifth gear that's the state now let us discuss about the outer circle that is behavior we can change the gears we can apply the brakes or release the brakes etc so these are the behaviors associated with the bicycle example so software objects are conceptually similar to real world objects they too consist of state and related behavior an object stores its state in fields 
and exposes its behavior through methods we shall have a greater discussion about uh, the methods and the fields in the coming lessons methods operate on an object's internal state and serve as the primary mechanism for object to object communication now hiding internal state and requiring all interaction to be performed through an object's method is known as data encapsulation this is the fundamental principle of object oriented programming we shall discuss about this uh, concepts later on what is a class in the real world we often find many individual objects all of the same kind for example there may be thousands of other bicycles in existence all of the same make and model each bicycle was built from the same set of blueprints and therefore contains the same components in object oriented terms we say that bicycle is an instance of the class of objects known as bicycles a class is the blueprint from which individual objects are created let us take one more example for for example there are 100 houses uh, to be built uh, of the same dimension means all dimensions are similar and uh, now what we have to do is we approach the architect and uh, we give the detail about the uh, land we are having and the dimensions the how many rooms we want to have what will be the dimension of the individual room etc how many rooms will be there in a flat etc now 100 such flats are to be built for example now what we do is when we approach the architect at that time we give the details that these are the requirements and accordingly the architect gives us the blueprint within blueprint he uh, specifies that it will be the dimension of the rooms and uh, this much of space will be for uh, different rooms and so on now actually the architect has given us the simple simply the piece of paper where that dimension is written that is the blueprint actually now depending upon that blueprint what we do is we approach the contractor and uh, we say that uh, 100 houses or 100 flats of this kind are to be built now actually the 100 flats are being built upon the design which has been given by the architect so that blueprint is really the guiding force towards the uh, build, uh, towards building the flats now that blueprint is actually a class and the 100 houses which are being built on the on the that uh, blueprint they are objects so class is what that is a blueprint from which individual objects are created